Ask Reddit by Twastoke1. What is the craziest war tactic used in history? In the French Revolutionary Wars, a French cavalry unit successfully traversed the ice of the frozen and held a harbor and captured the Dutch fleet as it was stuck in the ice. This was the first ever capture of naval units by a cavalry detachment. The Persian Empire was noted as putting their largest men on their smallest ponies, and organizing them into parade units. Enemy cities saw them from far off and thought that they were giants riding normal-sized horses, and would often neither give up, or it would lower morale just enough in order to get the upper hand. Take note, American men driving gigantic pickup trucks. Invading Rome on elephant back has to be up there. Elephants still talk about that shit. When the Anzacs pulled out of Gallipoli they converted some of their rifles to be self-firing, using string to pull the trigger and water dripping out of a can for the timer, and left them behind to make it seem like they were still occupying their abandoned trenches. So for a few hours the Ottomans were defending against well-armed beefdons. I'd also like to point out that as a WW1 trench, many of those tins were definitely filled with urine. This means there is a greater than zero chance a can of stale piss scored a kill on an enemy. Probably not the craziest, but pretty creative. Even the USS Texas was assigned to the D-Day invasion they find the cannons didn't have the reach to keep supporting the troops, so the captain ordered one of the torpedo blisters filled with water. This caused the ship to list, lean to one side, which increased the arch of fire of its older guns. The fat electrician on YouTube has a great video on this topic. In WWI the Brit air dropped opium laced cigarettes on the enemy and then when they started smoking and fell asleep they attacked the trenches. This happened twice. This is up there with Canadians lobbing food into German trenches, Germans were starving for days at a time until the Germans were expecting the food. Then they threw grenades, and rather than run from them, everyone ran towards what they thought was gonna be dinner. Cruel, cunning and it worked. During World War II, Japan floated hot air balloons containing incendiary devices across the Pacific Ocean, hoping to start forest fires. No fires were started but one did explode and kill a few civilians. The media was not allowed to report on it, which eventually led to Japan abandoning the tactic because they were hoping to hear results on the US news. https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash fu dash geo underscore balloon underscore bomb the US wanted to release bats with little incendiary devices tied to them from bombers over Japan, with the hope that the bats would roost in Japanese buildings constructed from wood and paper and then ignite them. They nearly burned down an Air Force base in testing. Ultimately, the atomic bomb became ready sooner than the bat bomb so it was never used. https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash bat underscore bomb Tossing a dead body over the side of a submarine with top secret invasion plans in a briefcase cuffed to his wrist, to fuck the Nazis when they fell for it. I get that it was the 40s and all and they weren't reading about it 80 years in retrospect but at some point someone would have had to be like this seems a little too convenient. Releasing 100s of cats onto the battlefield to distract the Egyptian army. More than that. Tying a live cat to your shield so an Egyptian soldier would refuse to strike you. Iraq vs Iran war. Saddam electrified a swamp full of Iranian troops. Then took all the bodies and built a road across the swamp and used it to attack. Brilliant. Can you imagine the mindfuck that caused? Canadians made spam a war crime. In WW1. Allies would throw spam to nearby German trenches. They would share it, ask for more, and more Germans would gather. Then we threw grenades. Technically, it's the is it food or a bomb tactic that's now frowned upon. Is this sequel to the show is it cake? 
Marines of Fox Company in Korea use their own dead as decoys for Chinese raids. Chinese would attempt to get close to what they thought were sleeping Marines and lazy sentries just to get filled with lead. Also the one Chinese officer would speak fluent Chinese to make them think they came across friendlies. Seeger of Malta 1565, the militia took a dead Turk replaced his head with a pig's head and tied the body to a post. When the Muslim Turks saw the body desecrated with filth of a swine they rushed out in the open to recover the body which was in a kill zone for an ambush. The siege of Malta itself is legendary, has got to be one of my favorite historical battles. In the War of 1812, the British Canadians were trying to take Detroit but were severely outnumbered. They only had a couple hundred British soldiers, and a few hundred militia and native warriors. They couldn't wait because another American force was on the way. So as they set up camp across the river, they dug trenches, and would march by in full view of the Americans, then duck into the trench and sneak back to march by again. At night they would light extra fires, and at dinner time they would do the same trench trick, the same guys repeatedly lining up to get pretend food. They also gave extra British uniforms to the Canadian militiamen so it looked like there were thousands of British soldiers. The Americans had men but not the supplies or morale to endure a seeger against an apparently superior British force. So they surrendered the fort without a fight. Can't have shit in Detroit. Siege of Kruja, Albania, 1450. One night during the siege Skanderbeg sent out a herd of goats with a candle on each of the goats horns. The encamped Turks believed it to be an Albanian attack and made a movement against the herd. When the Turks advanced far enough, Skanderbeg launched an attack against the force, destroying it. After the siege was lifted, Skanderbeg commemorated his victory by designing a helmet with the head of a goat on it, as a reference to his ingenious tactics used that night. The entire story of Skanderbeg is astonishing. Every step. I think it was ancient Cambodia who had the practice of dragging criminals to battle, and were instructed to cut off their own heads to demoralize the enemy, otherwise their families would be killed. Edit, it was ancient China, not Cambodia. And after some digging around, it may have been a translation error. How the frick do you cut off your own head? Imagine two drunk blokes in a rowboat going out into the fog of the English Channel looking for the periscopes of U-boats. And if they find one, bash it with a huge hammer that would cause the periscope to twist, bashing the commander in the head with the periscope handle below. Sounds like something Bugs Bunny came up with. In North Africa, the British put fake maps in a jeep. It was driven driven by an English officer who had been giving secrets to his belly dancing Egyptian lover who passed them on to the Egyptian Brotherhood, who in turn passed them on to the Nazis. The British found him out, and decided to kill two birds with one stone. They put the maps in the glove compartment, and instructed him to drive a certain direction. A bomb planted in the jeep by the British killed him, and drew the Germans' attention. They found the maps, which indicated smooth driving at a certain narrow pass, which was actually sandy. The German tanks got stuck, and were decimated by the British artillery hidden nearby. The book Bodyguard of Lies is one of the most fascinating war books I've ever read. The British in WW2 were amazing at deception. So to be sure, the British officer's jeep was blown up by the British. Us recruiting Navajo radiomen so that their radio signals would be hard to decode. They were instrumental in maintaining uninterrupted communications in Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Dad was a marine artilleryman in the Pacific in WWII. The Japanese had perfect English speakers who would learn our maps. G2 equals hill XXX. They would call in battleship fire on our troops and devastate the GIs. In the rush of war, time to code and decode was not there. Being able to know it would our guys, Navajo, asking for battleship fire was huge win for our own safety and quick effectiveness. During the Normandy invasion the USS Texas intentionally flooded their compartments to lean onto one side. The lean gave their guns an elevated angle, 
increasing its range to shell German positions further inland. Kamikaze pilots has to be up there. People always talk about the kamikaze pilots, but I'm more fascinated by the kamikaze torpedoes, anti-ship mines, and the human anti-tank mines. WW2 was fucking insane. Edited to add some Wikipedia links. Lunge mine, https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash lunge underscore mine close bracket. Caton, suicide submarine, https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash caton close bracket. Fukuryu, anti ship mine. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash fukuryu close bracket Not really a battle tactic, but American usage of shot guns during WW1. The guns used were 12 gauge shot guns that could be fitted with bayonets. Frontline American soldiers used the slam firing technique, during which the trigger is held as the gun is pumped and fired from the hip resulting in catastrophic injuries or death to anyone on the receiving end. The trench shotgun was so devastatingly effective that it spurred the German government to send an unusual request to Washington on the 19th of September, 1918, calling for the weapon's removal from combat. I'm pretty sure you'd get death or catastrophic injuries from being shot by a shotgun regardless of the firing approach. I vaguely remember a siege where a Chinese city refused to surrender to Genghis Khan, so he asked for a tribute of thousands of pigeons, rats, and cats as a token of respect in exchange for his departure. The city rounded up the various animals and delivered them, and he had his men tie wicks to all the animals and set them aflame before releasing them. The animals all fled back to their homes, setting the city on fire. Also Olga of Kiev's use of shadows and pigeons with wicks attached to burn down the city of her enemies. How the Australians cracked the Hindenburg Line in 1918. Step 1. At 5 a.m., fire a shit ton of gas into German lines. Germans get into gas masks and get ready to be attacked. Step 2. Don't attack. Repeat every day for a month. Germans will get used to the routine. Step 3, after 3 weeks, at 5 a.m. fire a shit ton of smoke shells and send 30,000 screaming Anzacs through the haze at masked up and confused Germans. Step 4, be back for breakfast. If you want a crazy job doing, give it to the Anzacs. I like the propaganda that the British were so accurate in their air attacks because the pilots ate a lot of carrots which improved their vision. That caught on so well that people to this day still believe that eating carrots is good for your eyes. That was about night vision as a guise to hide plane based radar tech which was brand new. Siege warfare. Chucking dead horses over the castle's walls. For shock and or effect and to poison the water supply. Can you imagine dying from a falling rotting horse? Inflatable tanks. Trucks and fake paratroopers to make the Axis think D-Day was going to happen somewhere else. Not to mention the elaborate radio networks they had, with dozens of soldiers transmitting messages to simulate a huge, non-existent formation doing training. Oh, and, Operation Mincemeat, https colon slash slash, en, dot m, dot wikipedia, dot org slash wiki slash operation underscore mincemeat close bracket ancient rome while fighting carthage realized they suck at the whole navy thing their solution put giant bridges on their ships so their infantry can board the enemy ship to turn it into a land battle at sea bouncing bombs as in dambusters the movie barnes wallace came up with the idea and it's still brilliant to me now my favorite thing about the dam busting bombs is how the aircraft that dropped them had to be a very precise distance from the ground, so they attached two spotlights that would align perfectly when the pilot was at the proper altitude. Absolute genius. 
In Mexico a native tribe once destroyed a Spanish attacking force by setting up huge trenches and filling them up with all the peppers they could get their hands on. They proceeded to light on fire making a toxic smoke that was extremely painful to breath. Chemical Warfare Babai I I I. When my mom roast peppers to make salsa. I knew it was a form of torture. In the first Gulf War in 1991, the Iraqis piled up a large berm, 3-4 meters high, in front of their forward trenches. The intent was that they would shoot the vulnerable bottoms of the coalition tanks when they drove over. Somebody in the five-sided funhouse decided to mount bulldozer blades on the tanks. They pushed the dirt into the trenches, burying the Iraqi soldiers before driving over their graves. I don't know if it was just a story but I heard about this Chinese lord who left the gates to his city open and unmanned before a superior army stormed them. They didn't end up attacking because they thought it was a trap. According to legends Huge even sat at the gate and played an instrument, trying to convey his calm and preparedness with perfect tempo, when in reality he was shitting his pyjamas about the army at their doorstep. I don't know if it's crazy or brutal. But Spanish conquistadors would unleash armored mastiff dogs on the indigenous people. The indigenous people hadn't encountered such large dogs nor had they seen them in war. The dogs would be unleashed and would tear humans apart. The dogs were large, well trained, armored, and extremely energetic and enthusiastic when set loose on people. Russia strapped mines to dogs and taught them to run under tanks to take care of their Nazi problem and dog overpopulation problem, only issue was they trained the dogs using Russian tanks. In Vietnam the Americans used haunted noises to scare the ops. Genius. It worked so well the South Vietnamese our allies were so scared the US had to stop. My history teach once told me Genghis Khan would mobilize his army and show up to the castle every single day and spend just 6 hours or so, just chilling. And he would do this for multiple months until the enemy just stopped caring. And one day the castle just stopped closing its gates and he stormed the castle and took it over. I was just watching a Vietnam documentary. They were using speakers in the forest to pretend to be ghost spirits. Saying stuff like I want to go home I didn't want to die, to psych out their opposition. Thought that was interesting. I still think the Scots and their bagpipes. If you don't know the backstory, and I'm not 100% I have it right, feel free to correct any inaccuracies. When Scotsmen went to war they'd play their bagpipes as a way of unnerving the other side. So you know they're coming. You can't see them but all you hear is the sound of bagpipes approaching. Piped on the beaches of Normandy too. Crazy. The British announcing to the Muslim guerrillas that they were dipping their ammo in pig fat. Fighting was over in 24 hours. The same thing was a big no-no when their own Muslim troops were asked to open the pig greased powder packs with their teeth. Operation Fortitude was pretty amazing. Fake an entire army and have Patton be the commander. It's just nuts that it worked. Inflatable tanks, radio signals large enough for an invading force. Once D-Day started the Germans thought it was a fake invasion and were waiting for the invasion further north. Germany knocked out Russia during WWI by putting Lenin, among others, on a sealed train car and sending him there. This was soon followed by the Bolshevik Revolution neutralizing the country's ability to wage war, and the eventual rise of the USSR. To be fair, the Russian Empire was on its last leg at this time. Wouldn't be a crazy war story threat without Bazooka Charlie. Flew a light observation aircraft, and realized he had a spare 200 something pounds of cargo weight. He decided to strap bazookas to the wings and strafe enemy tanks. He was credited with six tanks and an armored car. The guy who founded my hometown was known as Stovepipe Johnson. He was a Confederate soldier, yeah, I know, during the Civil War who captured an entire town that had been held by the Union Army by tricking them into thinking a length of stovepipe propped up on two wagon wheels was a cannon. 
In July 1862, in his Newborough raid, Johnson captured the town of Newborough, Indiana, bluffing its size of Union militia force into surrendering with only 12 of his men and a stovepipe mounted and a burnt black log on the running gears of an abandoned wagon to form a Quaker cannon. His capture of the first northern city to fall to the Confederates made the news even in Europe, and Johnson's men thereafter nicknamed him Stovepipe. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash stovepipe underscore Johnson Attack of the Dead Men HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash attack underscore of underscore the underscore dead underscore men close bracket Russian soldiers basically dying from poison gas charge German lines while coughing up blood and bits of their lungs, triggering the Germans to retreat in panic. Cortez burnt his own ships to motivate his soldiers and give them no option for a treat. It was succeed or die. Arthur's did the same in Northrend. Olga of Kievan Rus and her dampigens. Full frontal infantry assaults in the mini-A rifle ball era up to WWI are fairly straightforward BT quite crazy, so around 1850s onward. Infantry small arms gained some pretty devastating deadliness and accuracy improvements from this technology over the standard musket ball, and would form the foundation of the bullet technology we have today. The infantry charges of the European wars of this period, the US Civil War. Franco-Prussian War, all the way up to WWI were quite insane yet fundamentally ordinary tactics for a long while. The Mongols' catapulting plague infested corpses over the city walls of Kaffa, which infected the Genoese inside and caused them to flee by ship. The Japanese flying planes into ships seems pretty crazy. Trojan Horse German soldiers during WW2 would use meth to keep themselves awake during their long hours of marching. It wasn't just German troops either. Allied fighter and bomber crews were similarly issued to keep them alert on long flights. <laughs>